Welcome everyone to the uh, July 28th webinar for Stoplight. Um, we've titled this one Design Matters, uh, which is kind of funny because it's a little bit of a pun, like design is important, but also these are some matters of design. So I think that was kind of cute. Um, so what will you learn today? Um, we are hoping to sort of uh, help you understand the landscape and some of the terms that are being thrown around a lot right now, some terms like design first APIs and API first uh, creation, right? There are a lot of terms that are out in the industry that are incredibly, to me, confusing. And so I thought these might be confusing to the public at large too. Let's unpack those together. What do they mean? What are the benefits? What are the pros and cons of each type? of term and sort of what are some of the benefits of a design first approach, which is what we tend to follow here at Stoplight. Uh, at the end, you'll have plenty of time for questions. Feel free to leave your questions throughout the chat. Um, uh, the chat is open for any and all questions. If you wanna talk amongst each other, definitely a good place to do so. We'll also be asking a few questions throughout, so feel free to leave your answers in the chat, but let's get started. So um, this is going to be a pretty informal webinar. Um, we have a link uh, to sign up for more technical webinars in the future that can help you get started with Stoplight, the platform. But more importantly today, this is going to be about education and helping each other understand some of these confusing terms. So I guess what we first wanted to start with is how familiar are you with API creation? I would say for myself, I'm going to put this in chat, um, somewhat familiar. So I work at Stoplight, I have some familiarity with the landscape and how APIs are created and different processes and strategies, uh, but I don't necessarily know how to create an API in practice as well as some of our engineering and developer friends out there. And uh, I am a product marketing manager in case I didn't introduce myself uh, at Stoplight. So let's start with sort of an understanding of what is out there, right? What strategies for API creation are out there? Um, like I said at the beginning in this introduction, uh, API creation is uh, you know, increasingly important, but there are tons of confusing terms out there and uh, you are hearing them constantly, but there's not a lot of clarity around what's the way you should go about creating APIs. Let's take a look at that landscape. Um, you may have heard the term spec first, API specification first. Uh, you've definitely heard the terms API first, design first, and code first. Uh, and I almost guarantee API first is the one you've heard a lot recently. You've heard this um, in you know conversations with people like Postman, um, in just the, the business world at large. Um, but let's go through each of these different uh, names and see what we can learn about them. I want to start with spec first. I consider this one the like most narrow, the smallest and uh, most specific thing. So spec driven. Um, so when you create an API specification, let's say in Open API or Swagger or even in Postman Collection, uh, then you provide that spec to your implementation and engineering team and get right to work coding it. Um, it, it's sort of like design light. Some people might confuse it for design first because you use it as specification in the design process, but this does not include really important aspects of the design process, like getting feedback or standing up a mock server and let's, uh, letting someone test out your API before you go into coding it. So I would say, you know, this, this is, sort of a step in a direction toward design, but this is just the very, very fundamental basics of how to uh, create it. Some companies that use this approach, we found that Atlassian uses this approach, which is interesting, you know, uh, quite a large organization, uh, but they're very spec driven. So uh, I hope they're moving toward a more design first approach with feedback loops and all the, the more established processes, uh, but, you know, maybe they are. The next one is, uh, I, oh, uh, Taba uh, asked the question, is there a word like docs first API? I would say maybe, maybe docs first falls into sort of a combination of you can have docs for your specification in spec first API or in design first API, you will 
always have documentation at every step of the process. Process. So I would say design first is probably closer to a documentation first API. Next, uh, let's look at the pros and cons of this spec first API. Limited features and information. Like I said, it's a very narrow, very specific uh, way of creation. Um, you can't do the, the mock servers. You can't give bad request examples. You can't detect breaking changes. And often, you know, it's it's a difficult way to translate from that specification into the action of creating it. But what you do have is a very direct uh, A to B, get that API created. And um, it's just very clear. So I would say, you know, that's, like I said, a step in the right direction. Now let's go to code first. Um, this is like... I've got my business contract. Somebody said we need an API. Let's get it made. Right? Let's go direct from knowing it has to be made. Here are some of the requirements. Boom, let's get it right into engineering. And that sort of skips a lot of in between. Um, <laughs> it's also a, a way of implementing um, API in the code and then creating an API spec bef before that, right? So it's sort of like a backwards approach. Um, now, when I when I say uh, some of the pros and cons of each of these, I am not saying one is any better than the other. That might be a common misconception. I There are ways that you can get benefits from all of these approaches, and it really depends on what you're trying to do and what you're trying to accomplish. We like to extol the virtues of design first because the outcomes have been very good for a lot of our customers, but that doesn't mean it's appropriate in all cases. And so I want to make sure everybody knows like, these are all perfectly valid ways of creating APIs depending on the use case and what you need to accomplish, but there are just more benefits outweighing some of the cons in a lot of these cases. So in the code first approach, you're really going to you're gonna have a, mis a disconnect between what you're creating and what is actually needed because we all know that speaking the language of the business is not always the easiest thing. And so, you know, having that business case, but no way to get feedback or, or validation between when you have the business case and you've actually coded an API and are ready to launch that thing. If there's no um, feedback or validation in there, you're, you're wasting a lot of time and effort on something that may not be what you need ultimately. So it's 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 pretty tough, um, and and documentation is an afterthought in this case. So Taba, like your question asked, is there a docs first approach? This is not it. Usually docs are uh, a last minute thing because you're you're busy coding the thing first, and you're not integrating documentation into each step. And I, like I said, you know, it's just the outcome is not necessarily going to meet the business case. In some cases, it does. You know, sometimes you'll have a code first. Or, API that is exactly what you need. You slap it out there, you get it done, and you deploy it, and it's what you need. But in that case, you're not creating a repeatable, scalable process. You are getting lucky <laughs> in each individual case. Um, so yeah, this, this process isn't necessarily the most effective or best use of your time and talents. However, um, it's pretty simple, right? It's a direct line from the, the business case to the implementation, uh, pretty easy. Uh, and then your developers are, you know, they're getting right to work. So there's no wasted time for them either. Um, now the uh, name you keep hearing over and over again, API first. So you've heard this from Postman. You've heard this in the business uh, publications. You've heard this on MSNBC, I've heard recently. What is API first? This is more of a philosophical approach to APIs and business than it is a, an API creation tactic. Um, I like to think of API first as the mandate that helps you determine how to treat your APIs. It's um, aligning the business around the need for APIs and then those APIs become more than just a delivery mechanism and more than just you know, a piece of technology that exposes your, your business value and, and your data and your resources and your microservices. It's a way to establish a connection to your customers for those backend pieces of, of data that are important to your business. Um, and it's, it's about um, surrounding your APIs 
with processes and mandates and um, treating your API as a first class citizen in your organization. So thinking of your API as a critical business asset. Um, we, you know, Stoplight approves of this approach. We think it, treating your APIs as a product, as a crucial part of your business is, is important to success for these, these APIs. Uh, but like I said, Postman, Swagger Hub, Fast API, Ready API, they're all extolling the virtues of API first in the space. So I think we all agree this is a good way to operate. Uh, and it's it's a good way to stick, keep your business strong and uh, innovating. Now, what are some of the pros and cons? Uh, the cons are, that's a big change for a lot of organizations, especially laggard organizations in, in places like healthcare or retail. You know, there's, it takes a lot of uh, planning and considerable shift in business strategy in order to change your, your company into API first. It's, like we've learned over this past year, less of a technology problem and more of a people problem or culture shift. And so aligning your business around API first is going to take considerable um, efforts from the leadership, from the both engineering and product teams, from marketing, from customer success. Every piece of the business has to align around this mandate in order to make it successful. Careful integration and testing is mandatory. And why is that, right? Why is that different than code first? Well, with code first, uh, you didn't take the time to uh, get feedback or understand if uh, <laughs> you would have a problem after you deployed it anyway. Um, so you're going to have to deal with the consequences. In API first, the consequences are more dire because you're reaching more customers with this API. Uh, it's meant to be the way you drive business. So you want it to be good and functional and have um, success when you launch it because people are going to rely on it. And it's going to be like that uh, first glance they get at, at your business, right? It's like making a good first impression. So you, you want it to work. Um, so what are the positives, right? So it sounds like, wow, that's a lot of investment and time and effort. Holy moly, uh, how do I shift my entire business that way? Well, when you're able to successfully um, install an API first approach at your business, you can work in parallel. That means across the organization, everyone is aligned to the strategy and they're working together in parallel to ensure that these APIs that are driving your business value are well supported, well documented, well designed, tested, su customer support is there. Um, it's, it's all working in, in tandem. There is a real emphasis on positive developer experience here. So developer experience is also a thing, a buzzword you've heard a lot. Why? It's because those are the people who will be using these products. And so you want them to feel like uh, they're your customers and you care about them. So you provide them with the assets and the interactive documentation and libraries and SDKs that are going to make your API adop adoption successful. And it actually reduces development costs because you're not going back and fixing things. Uh, you're iterating, but you're not fixing problems that you would have prevented had you been more of a design first approach. And uh, you have more consistency and interoperability because you're treating your APIs as part of a, an entire program. And so your focus is on consistency and making sure your APIs work together. Because this is a, philo a philosophy, and because it's like an entire business shift, we take this a little bit more manageable. And this is where design first comes in. We think of this like a happy medium, a tactic between API first as a mandate across your entire organization and spec first. So being able to use your specification. Um, in the API design process, right, this is like, a set of repeatable processes that you can use for each API to help create better outcomes for your organization. It's a more of a thing to help you with a sea change, right? With that culture shift. If you can start with one API with a design first process, maybe it goes really well, then you can try the next one and the next one. And then before you know it, you've got API first as a culture across your org 
and everybody's adhering to the same processes. So that's how we like to think of it as a happy medium and a more um, tangible and direct way to start to try to turn your organization API first, instead of just making the decision and trying and trying to <laughs> trying to get everybody to align all at once. We know it's a culture shift. Take time to establish those processes and go API by API. Um, so we like to think of this as stakeholder driven. So not just on the business and leadership side of the house, but also your customers determine what your API should be. And so you want to make sure you get feedback in, in each iteration before you go to deployment. So before you write any code, you can have documentation and interactive experiences to get feedback and allow your stakeholders to participate in that feedback process. Um, we want we want people to be part of this process. It's not just about technology. Why? Who 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 cares about this approach? Right? We do. Stoplight does because we do think API specifications are an incredibly useful tool, but they're only useful with the right surrounding processes and people. Uh, Postman and Spiker Hub also claim to be uh, for this approach. So you know, best of luck to them. Uh, what does it look like? The, the difference between code first and design first. So like I said, design first is that sort of more approachable way of, of, of be, being API first. But this is more of a tactic. So code first is you get that business input, make it into a code, and then you document it and share it. Wow. Uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, very risky. <laughs> now with design first, it's get that business input, talk to those stakeholders, create a design, that is basically a mock of your API product, get feedback, uh, establish um, style guides, make sure it adheres to those style guides, uh, document it throughout the process. So you should have documentation for your API design so that you can share it internally with st stakeholders and externally with your people who are helping you with feedback. And then you can code it, right? Once you've gotten through the, the validations and the checks and you're ready to go, and then you'll have a much stronger, uh, more customer-friendly code and a better developer experience because you will have um, updated and good documentation throughout. What are the pros and cons? It is a little more time consuming. We're not gonna lie to you, right? It's less time consuming than API first, which is an entire company mandate. Design first is at least a uh, piece by piece but it is more time consuming than code first because you're taking that time to design, work with the product managers, work with the stakeholders to get the right um, thing to market. And there's not much tooling support. So, I mean, there is some out there. Uh, you've got some open source tools like PAW, um, but you know, Stoplight, we consider ourselves very dedicated to API design. And so we've really worked to highlight this process with our own tooling. Um, API design requires planning and thought. Uh, there's no two ways around it. If you want a better outcome for your API, you got to think about it. You got to work on it. Design first just seems like documentation first. Can't figure out how it's different. That's a, that's a good question. Um, so one of the ways that's different is documentation is only somewhat passively um, interactive, right? You can have documentation that is internal that, and that you can send to stakeholders that they can read and somewhat engage with code snippets and what, whatnot. But with a design, you can actually get in and uh, see uh, the, the um, creation of it before it's even documented. So you can get feedback at that stage. And so it's, it's pre-documentation even. Um, I, I, I think there's a, a lot of like, parallels and synergies to those two ideas and they go well together, but the design is the creation and the documentation is the output. Um, and just like with any approach, there's just no guarantee that the end result will be perfect. Will it be better? Probably. Uh, will the, uh, cre the coding cycle time be shorter? Probably, we've seen that. Some of our customers have seen a 60% decrease in coding cycles just because they went design first and they had a design that they all agreed on. Everybody agreed what everything should be called and it was easy to create. Uh, but what are the pros? You don't need to go back and rewrite that code. You, you spent time in the design phase, you're writing code that doesn't need to be scrapped or rewritten. 
you're reusing assets uh, that have been established as good and cost saving. And so great, you can reuse those in the next creation and continue using those uh, processes that we talked about to be more effective and, and going forward, create that API first philosophy. Um, improved API security, <laughs> this is a huge concern. If you went code first and you didn't think about security as part of that design, right? You weren't designing at all. You just built the thing. If uh, you relied on the developers to choose whatever API security or none as part of the creation process, uh, you're, you're taking a huge risk. Whereas design, you all come together, you determine what's best to keep your API secure before it's even built. And then, you know, all these, <laughs> these other positives are things we've seen in practice. Um, it can be an innovator, right? Sh creating and sharing designs within the organization can help you uh, spark innovation. Um, it can create a positive developer experience with that documentation like we talked about. Those assets and that documentation, documentation first, is actually really helpful to developers. Reduced infrastructure investment because you're not building a whole bunch of code uh, that is unnecessary and improves consistency and governance. This is huge, and we'll talk about this in a little bit with some more concrete examples. Okay, why the hell does anyone care about design when we talk about APIs? It's because it's, it's actually helpful. So companies with high design maturity are more likely to see results like cost savings, revenue gains, and market position improvements. Like I said, we have examples of customers who have cut down code development times by 60%. They've improved their revenue shares. We have one very large customer who has become the biggest beverage company in the world. And it's because they've taken a design first API approach. And uh, I would ask now that what's your role in APIs at your organization, but uh, chat's disabled. So if you want to put in Q&A, that's cool too, but we'll just move on. Now let's, now let's show some actual examples for each of these approaches. Uh, oh, we have a question. Are there sometimes performance or scaling costs where a design which suited stakeholders gives a big hit to compute complexity or ease of engineering agility? Do those design iterations typically involve engineering contribution too? That's when, okay, that's a great question. When we say stakeholders should be brought into the design process, engineering leaders should absolutely be part of that design discussion process. A thousand percent, Samuel. Great observation, because those engineering leaders are the people who can prevent those costs from building up. They can, because business leaders, they're not going to see those coming, or they're not going to be able to predict them in the way that an engineering leader will, right? So stakeholders is really about getting the right people in the room. Engineering leaders, business leaders, product leaders, customer success and marketing leaders, right? If you're taking your product API first, as you're going to try in your organization, it should be part of the design process. So I have th things to say about what the customer needs. So great question. So when should you choose spec first? Like I said, we're, we're kind of unpacking all these different terms. We're treating them as, as though, you know, there are use cases for each of them. Yes, you've heard the pros and cons, but there are ways you can do it uh, for each of these. So what, why would you use spec first? You need it fast. You don't have time for design, but you do need a specification to work from. Cool. Um, this is also helpful with partner integrations, right? Where you're setting up a partnership, uh, your, your executive says, I just shook a handshake deal with Microsoft, get this thing integrated, right? There, there could be any number of very, I need it fast, don't have time for design, still need something to work from. So specification first could happen. When to choose code first? Uh, we like to say, don't, but if you must, it's when you really need to get this thing to market uh, and when you are developing internal APIs that no one will see really on the other side. And so you just kind of need to get them done. When to choose API first, when you're at a large enterprise, when you have the time and the resources and the culture change and the buy-in <laughs> uh, and maturity. Like I've been saying, we do believe this is actually the way you should operate from a business, but not every bit. This is not realistic for most people. 
for most people, maybe your team can operate API first, right? If you're, if you're working on an API team, uh, you could be API first. That could be uh, the thing you use to drive business value. And that's awesome. But for most, most organizations, say a McDonald's, right? They're not considering APIs as the first component of their business value. That would be hopefully their food, but probably more likely their brick and mortar locations. Um, well, here's a really good case study example. So PayPal decided they were going to be API first. And what did they focus on? APIs as products. Let's treat all of our products as, as a, they are APIs. Let's treat them as the number one part of our, our business. And so they had to create both a strategy where they could create service contracts using API, open API, and then build these APIs following a design first methodology as much as they could throughout the organization. Like I said, API first is the philosophy, design first is the tactic. And when to choose design first, when you care about developer experience, when you care about delivering really good APIs that follow your API first philosophy, when you need good communication with your stakeholders, and for when you want to build scalable and repeatable processes. This is a tactical way of building APIs that fulfills your API first mandate. Um, here's a good case study. This is Calendly. This is one of our customers actually. Um, they built a new platform using a design first API approach. Um, and they focused on their new integration workflows. So you may have seen these being launched recently. Uh, they now have workflows for your calendar, calendar invites, which is super helpful for folks who are uh, trying to take meetings all the time with people who are external, right? Um, so it's been really helpful for them. And the, the way that they describe it is it's led to higher quality implementation of their APIs, more consistency across all of their APIs, more consistency within their API program, better governance, right? Better oversight. Of, of their API creation process and documentation that's never out of date, always available for their team. It's high quality and it's ready for their developers. So I think that's, that's fantastic. It's really good to hear that this, this approach is working for them. How? <laughs> I, could, I could go on and on and on about design first, right? We've, we've talked about it as that happy medium. We've talked about it as a tactical way of achieving an API first strategy, but, but how do you do it? right? I could go on and on. I could blather on and on for the rest of today, but I'm not going to do that. How do we achieve it? What do you mean by API governance? So we're going to talk about that in a minute. Uh, good question. So this is what we call the API first life cycle. So there's, there's a, an idea right now of the full API life cycle, right? And a lot of API management uh, vendors and tooling sets, um, they support the entire thing we don't really want to know about that entire thing. We want to know what are the repeatable processes that we can set in place at the design phase to help support the rest of that life cycle. Let's zoom in on this design part. Here's what it looks like. So first, you need to define a business case, right? That's what we talked about. Get those stakeholders in the room. What do we need? Um, what does our business need? How are we going to support it? How are we going to create it? What engineering costs might be associated? Um, who sh whose feedback should we get? What customer is this for? Why should they care about it? Right? There's a lot you can put into that business case that you can then design from. You should perform a redundancy check. So tools like Stoplight can help you. Do you already have an API that performs some of what you've requested? Is there an internal API that you could use to externalize some of these business processes that you need? You need to know what you have in order to innovate. Then you need to create a set of API standards that you can follow. And that's what we mean by API governance, Taba. It's uh, governance is following a set of style guidelines and rules so that when you become API first, your APIs are consistent well-managed, secure, right? You have people who are, are uh, able to give a set of guidelines and then developers who can follow those. Now, okay, great. You've got it defined. Now you can get into the actual design phase. Um, you've got that business contract. 
You can create your API specification to it. You can stand up a pilot and a prototype in order to get some concrete hands-on examples that people can work from and give feedback for. Um, you can get that feedback, right? You can send an internal link, say, hey, come check out this design. Tell me what you think about it. Uh, you can sit in in a review process with those stakeholders, get that feedback. You can perform a style check. This is another component of governance where you created those API standards. You can follow them, enforce them, review them, make sure they're being followed. And if they're not being followed, have a conversation about why, right? Like we uh, decided to enable this style rule, um, but we see in your design that you have a warning that you didn't follow it. Let's have a conversation about why. Maybe there's a reason, maybe there's a good reason and your developer could tell you what that reason is. But if you didn't know that it was there, <laughs> you, that discussion would never happen. If you just went code first, it was wild west, right? They could just do whatever they want and there would be no, no um, enforcement of those style guides. And then you get that final review and approval and validation. You're ready to go with the rest of it, right? Documentation is set up, mocking set up to make sure all the, the codes are correct, right? The error codes. It looks good. Now we're ready to code, release, monitor, ready to go. And at the end there, we just have a little bit of design like best practices. You should do some governance review of, you know, did this thing actually meet the business and use case that we set forth, right? Go back, clean up your, <laughs> clean, <laughs> clean up, tie the loose ends together, make sure everything follows what you expected. Okay. Why? When you collaborate with stakeholders and your business partners to define your needs and what success looks like before you even begin to create a design, it will make the whole process so much smoother, faster, and with better outcomes. Here's how to create and use a style guide. So in Stoplight, we have uh, created what are called API style guides, and they are projects that you can enable right in your, um, in your workspace. You can create your own, you can use best practices ones. We just released two best practices rule sets that you can use right now, um, and it's built in. So as you're creating your API design, if something looks wrong, if it doesn't follow the style guide, it'll either put up a warning or a error message, and you can have that review process to say, uh, I don't know, let's, let's figure out why you decided not to follow these rules. So there's a little note here. Be sure to set up flexible rules without impeding process or progress, right? We don't want bottlenecks. That's not what we're trying to do here. We're trying to create consistency. We're not trying to create bottlenecks. Surface other designs for ideation and reuse. This is another component of design that makes it so much faster, better, and higher quality. Like I said, when you know what you have, Right. When you have an API program that you've cataloged, you've got it all together, you've got all your designs in one place, you can know what's available. You can say, oh, we've got this, this snippet of code that's being utilized for this. It could be very helpful for this other reason, and it's consistent. It matches our previous API design. Um, you can avoid duplication. You can kickstart ideation. Um, there's just a whole lot you can do when you have a repository of all of your designs in one place. Visualize your designs. So this is that place where you can have tangible, concrete feedback. Um, when you have visual editor, it's not just line by line by line by line of <laughs> open API code, right? It's, it's a guided experience. It helps you um, understand what you're, what you're creating toward without having to know every little facet of AP, open API. Create more reusable aspect, assets so that you can uh, have a library of them, share them across the organization, working together, working smarter, not harder. Don't keep them locked away somewhere else. Integrate mock servers into the design flow. Another way to get tangible feedback on uh, your API designs before they're even put into code. And get feedback throughout. So this is a, what we see here is an example of uh, several people in an API design at once where they are able to collaborate in real time together all before you start to code. This is a great place to get that internal stakeholder feedback uh, and uh, make sure everybody's working in sync. And then probably most important step and one that Taba so 
uh, clearly articulated, which is documentation is important. And so you want documentation at every step of this process. With Code First, like we said, um, documentation is often an afterthought, right? You're, you're so focused on, on that uh, API and getting it out there and, and working. You don't really think about docs or why, why they matter to developer experience or customer experience or feedback generation. Um, but if you have docs as code, as every part of your process, uh, it just makes it so much easier to share and get engagement with your API and your design before it's even coded. If you have a, an, a documentation of your API design, that's a great way to get stakeholders involved in the process because it's an approachable, human readable thing, right? It's not a bunch of code. It's, it's created for humans to engage with and it makes more stakeholders able to be involved in the process who aren't developers. That's ultimately what we're trying to get with by bringing more stakeholders into the process, we want better business outcomes. And so we have to make it easier for them to be involved in the process. Like I said earlier, I'm not a developer, but I have been involved in creation of API discussions. Why the heck would they want a product marketing manager in? It's because when you treat your APIs as products, it's a product. And so you care about consumers. You care about the insight that your customers can give you. And so, you know, as I'm involved in these conversations and I'm brought in earlier in the process, I'm not reading RAML. <laughs> I'm reading the documentation of the API design that helps me understand what's trying to be accomplished, who it's for, and I can provide feedback uh, to ensure that I'm validating what's going to be created before it's even uh, deployed. So... Now it's time for q and I think I, I answered a lot of questions uh, throughout, but if you have any, now would be a good time to put them in the questions section. I'll make sure I go back. Curious to know how many folks have UX designers in their organization? I feel like API designers bring the same value to your product just like UX designers do. Wow, this is a great question from Noor. Noor, excellent question. Um, you know, I keep seeing more and more API designer uh, job postings. So that's one of my that's one of my like little pet projects at at Stoplight is to look at job postings and see what the demand is for API design across the space. And what I'm noticing is that uh, there are API design job postings. And who typically are the organizations who are posting for that? I'm going to tell you right now, finance is the place to be. Open, fin open banking, open finance, they love UX designers for their APIs. I think it's because there's a huge race to be the best in the space and to innovate more than your competitors. And they know that one of the best ways to do that is through good design. So great question. Um, yeah, I think I answered all of those questions. Oh, I got one more here. Does code first work best for lean methodologies? Wow, great. Um, so one of the tenets of a lean methodology is repeatable process. So I would say yes and no. Yes, in that it gets it done, which is also a tenet of a lean methodology is to not put too much time and effort into any one thing. Um, but no, in that it is not a repeatable and scalable process because you're not really documenting the process itself. You're not getting that feedback and uh, you're just kind of slapping it together. So uh, I guess the answer is, uh, if you want to be good at it, no. <laughs> if you want to get it done, yes. Well, thank you so much, everybody, for joining a quick 45 minutes in and out. Really appreciated your time. And uh, we have resources for you. Just let us know what else you'd like to see. Thanks so much.